Encouragement is such an easy and simple thing to give, yet it can have a profound impact on ourselves and others around us. We can so easily forget to be encouragers, and that's why we feel that this book, Encouragement, The Adrenaline for the Soul, written by Mark Chansky, is such an important and vital book for our time. And we would like to review it and discuss it with you and hope that you will also read it as well. What's up, everyone? Back with another video here uh, of Costanzo Family uh, Reviews. And in this one, we're going to review uh, a book called Encouragement, uh, Adrenaline for the Soul by Pastor Mark Chansky. And this is our first installment of our book review series. We have three series going. We have a movie series. We have a K-drama series and a, a book review series. So in this one, we're going to be reviewing uh, Mark Chansky's book, Encouragement. And uh, it's a wonderful book. And really just the outline of this video, it's going to be first, we're going to review the book as a whole. Uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about some examples mm -hmm. that stood out to us in the book. And then we want to give you the basic structure uh, of the book as it flows and as it reads itself. And then fourthly, we want to talk about uh, the gospel as our ultimate encouragement. And that's really the focus and the central central point of the book. And we want to harp on that, um, on that point a long time. And then uh, lastly, we're just going to give our own personal examples of how people in our past encouraged us. Mm. Uh, and so hopefully that encourages you to encourage others. Uh, and that's what it's all about. So we're happy to do this review with you. Uh, if you haven't read the book or if you're curious, I hope this uh, this review will help you out and maybe lead you to buy the book and, and read it for yourself. Another devotional book to read that is very profitable. Yes. Yes. So um, first, um, review the book as a whole. What did how, how would you review the book or um, so, your impressions? Yeah. So I love Mark Chansky's writing. Um, I've read his book womanly dominion which is a really really good book um he's written a book manly dominion as well um and one thing i love about his writing is he you know he writes about these biblical topics and um, profound topics but he writes about them in a way that's very easy to follow and easy to understand for the common person and one thing he does um really well is he uses a lot of illustrations throughout yeah and that helps you, your mind to grab on, grab a hold of what he's saying and to follow it um, more closely. And it just uh, speaks to you. It's relatable. And so um, that's one thing I just love just about his writing. How about you? Yeah, I would say the same thing. I mean, he uh, uses the power of the metaphor and the analogy. Uh, he uses great illustrations. He has mm -hmm. great quotes, uh, not only by church historians, but... Um, just also just historical figures in the past that um, that talk about encouragement mm -hmm. and that's one thing I love about this book it's, it's not just Christians talking about it from a Christian perspective but also uh, Chansky uses just history in itself mm -hmm. and 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 great stories and illustrations uh, that are really powerful and uh, also I just like the structure of the book in itself you know he gets you excited about um, the importance of um, encouragement and then he goes down uh, to some practical applications and then um, he funnels it into the gospel so his writing is very easy to read very straightforward and uh, there's not a lot of books out there on uh, on this topic especially and on this biblical theme. books yes yeah I think it's 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 kind of ironic that the name of the book is Adrenaline for the Soul, and he uses this whole picture of the EpiPen. He's always mentioning it throughout the book, you know, the EpiPen of encouragement. Yeah, right. And the book itself felt like that when I read it. To me, it felt like um, a, a, like just somebody just giving me this motivation. It was an encouraging book. Even though it's encouraging you yeah. to encourage others, it is also a very encouraging book as well. Yeah. Um, uh, gets to the heart of the gospel, which is our ultimate encouragement, as we'll talk about. Um, but it just, it's just a, it's a strong motivation. And I would say it's, it's a, just a strong book. I think it's a book that every Christian should read. And um, when I was thinking about it, you know, I was thinking about how we think, of, us as Christians can sometimes think of encouragement. Sometimes it can get a bad rap because, you know, we have these ideas like some, like a children's song. Oh, you know, if we say nice things to each other, we'll all be happy, kumbaya. Yeah. Um, it can all kind of seem, in the 
in the face of our the grim reality of our world, it can seem kind of hokey sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I think he what he does really well is he shows through um, both biblical and real life examples um, how important and just how vital um, encouragement is and what an impact it can make. How we forget to do it, but how impactful it really is. Yeah. And how it's it's a biblical thing. It's something we're encouraged mm-hmm. to do, you know, as Christians. Yeah, we're, com- we're commanded to do it. And I think it's, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you encourage somebody or you... you um, you give them a good word um, that try to lift their spirits. You don't realize it at the time. Uh, you just encourage them, and you don't know what an impact it has mm-hmm. on them. But uh, but this book kind of shows that uh, you know those things and those words do have an impact, and they mm-hmm. can change lives, uh, you know, for the better. Uh, so yeah. it's really obviously it's an encouraging book, uh, and and it motivates you to um, get outside yourself and look at the concerns um, and uh, of others and, and trying to try to lift them up uh, so yeah so that's the review of the book as a whole um, but some examples that stood out to us mm-hmm. some exa- examples that stood out to you illustrations that, that yeah stood out to so he book. had so many good illustrations I mean so many like you could never talk about all of them <laughs> yeah um, but what were some that kind of stood out to you that you remember kind of sticking with you, yeah. illustrations he used for encouragement. Yeah. Uh, right off the bat, his um, his opening chapter, uh, he speaks about the exhilaration of encouragement and the impact mm-hmm. that it can have on a person. And he, he, he talks about um, Jerry Kramer, who was a professional football player for the Green Bay Packers. And at the time, he was a um, young Wisconsin boy, just drafted right out of college. Um, he was young. He was um, he he was a little bit. Uh, uh, his confidence was shaky a little bit, and his first year they lost about nine to ten games, and he didn't play well. Mm-hmm. And then the following year, Vince Lombardi uh, was hired to coach the Green oh, Bay yeah. Packers. He was defensive coordinator for the New York Giants, but he said that uh, in the opening practice in in, in the summer. And he struggled uh, during the first few practices, and it got to a point where he lost all of his confidence, and he was questioning whether or not he was going to play. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually decided that he was going to quit football and and go into another profession. So, as he went back into the locker room, his hands obviously, um, you know, on his face and dejected. Uh, Lombardi saw him and came to him and and. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, rubbed his head and said, "You're good. One day, you're going to be one of the best offensive linemen uh, in the country, or in the NFL." And he said that after he said that, uh, everything changed. It was like a boost of confidence for him that Lombardi believed in him, and he went on to become uh, one of the greatest offensive linemen ever to play. And he won like four Super Bowl rings, and uh, you know, just all from. Uh, this word of encouragement from Lombardi, so mm-hmm. uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a real. That's a cool. Was one of the really cool real life examples that yeah. he used. Yeah. What about you, <clears throat> Rach? What do you see? Um, one that stood out to me was actually one that um, Mark Chansky, who is the author, wrote about his own experience, and he was talking about how he used to run marathons, <clears throat> and how as he ran the marathon, when he would get to a point where he'd be very tired and fatigued, and he'd be ready to stop. He was always pushed forward by the the people on the sidelines cheering him on and how that was just like a shot of adrenaline that just kept him going to the finish line, especially as he got towards the end and he would be so tired. And um, he was talking about how now, you know, even when he's not running in the marathon, sometimes he'll just go just to cheer people on because he knows and remembers how impactful that was for him. And it's just interesting how he goes into even the... um, the biological aspects of how it works it's like when we're encouraged it does something to us it renews our spirit it renews Mm. our energy it motivates us um it's just so so powerful and um yeah another one another one that also i remember um it was another one of mark chansky's own experiences 
mm. um, was when he was younger, he was talking about the importance of remembering people's names and calling people by yeah. name and how that's such an encouragement to us. And it really is. You don't really think about it. But when someone says your name, you feel like, okay, they know who I am. They care about me. Yeah. Um, you know, even the Bible says the Lord calls us by name. And it's, it's a, to signify how much he loves us and cares for us. He knows each of us by name. Um, but he was talking about when he was younger. I think he was like in middle school, which, you know, we're all awkward and we're all insecure in middle school. Yeah. And he was going to play basketball and he was, you know, not sure how he was going to do and how the coach kind of remember, like, hey, Chansky, like he remembered his name and put his name on the back of his jersey and how that just gave him so much encouragement and he went on to do well in basketball and how encouraging that was so those were two that kind of stood out to me yeah and one more that stood out to me um was the illustration where he gives about a christian author um and counselor uh, i won't mention his name but uh when he was younger when he i think believe is in high school like maybe freshman or sophomore in high school um, he was very insecure um, and he would stutter anytime he had to give a public speech or anything like that. And so um, he would get nervous during the prayer meetings mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. so nervous that he wouldn't want to pray. But one night they called on him to pray and he stuttered his way through uh, this prayer. And he said that it even bordered line on heresy, the stuff that he was saying. <laughs> you know, he, yeah. was thanking, he was thanking the Father for dying yeah. on the cross for our sins. <laughs> And so he for was raising the spirit yeah, from the dead. Yeah, so he was completely embarrassed, but he said that he remembered um, an old uh, godly man uh, in the congregation coming up um, on the side of him afterwards, and he said, uh, "You know, um, whatever you decide to do for the Lord, I'm 100% behind you, mm. and I believe in you." And uh, he said that after that. Uh, that really bolstered his confidence and um, and he realized that it wasn't just I think he was more focused about himself and and how he how he prayed and it had to be a perfect prayer and all this but um, it gave him confidence that you know the Lord loved him regardless mm -hmm. and so it was a you know very powerful um, encouragement to him okay so let's just talk quickly about the basic structure of the book just to give you an idea of what to expect and uh, first Chansky just goes into the first few chapters talking about the importance of encouragement uh, the exhilaration um, of encouragement uh, the exhilarating factor it brings to somebody mm -hmm. to hear encouraging word uh, it says that anxiety or worry brings depression upon the soul but a good word uh, livens the bones and he gives um, numerous examples and numerous texts from Proverbs uh, and the Psalms, how encouragement, mm -hmm. um, that we're obligated to encourage uh, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. So he talks about the importance, and then he talks about some um, practical examples of that in the Bible and also elsewhere. And that's really the first section of the book. And then it kind of climaxes to the gospel as the ultimate encouragement. And, um, you know, obviously that chapter in itself is... Uh, mm -hmm. is rich with um, you know the gospel theme and how Christ is or, or Christ's death for uh, his people and the gospel is the ultimate encouragement uh, not only to believers but unbelievers as well and so he goes into that and then he takes a turn and he kind of takes the negative side of things and he looks at um, the reasons why we struggle to encourage others which uh, I just sorry I just yeah, want to say one thing that that was really that section of the book the reasons why we struggle was very convicting to me um you know going through what what is it that makes us reticent yes. to give encouragement when encouragement is so easy to give why are we reticent to do it and um he brings out different reasons you know um some is just our innate selfishness we want to be on top and sometimes yeah. we think in order to be on top we need to cut everybody else down and if we're putting other people up above us, you know, that defeats our purpose of getting ourselves on top. Yeah. Um, he also talks about sometimes it's a misplaced desire for integrity. Like, oh, why should I praise you for getting a B when I know you can get an A? Yeah. Um, but he brings out that that's not Christ. Right. And none of those things are Christ. Like Christ is, obviously, Christ is above all of us. And yet he humbles himself to, you know, give us encour many encouragements. And he encourages yeah. us when we are not at all what we ought to be. 
right. you know, encourages us even though we are weak and often failing and even our good efforts are often very feeble. So that was very um, convicting just to see even my own pride and, um, you know, reticence sometimes to give encouragement. And he even mentions like people with competitive spirits and how sometimes it's hard for them, you know, but, you know, we need to humble ourselves and we need to be like Christ. Yeah. So that was really good. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I agree. No, that was a very, very important part of the book because like you said, it's easy, um, you know, sometimes it's easy to, uh, you know, give an encouraging word to somebody but uh, you don't really evaluate, okay, why am I not encouraging somebody else? Mm -hmm. What are the internal factors or what's going on in my heart is why am I, I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, and he talks about uh, having a critical spirit, being someone that's um, critical or grumpy mm -hmm. or you know, not willing to encourage for whatever reason. And he goes into uh, the deeper aspect of that and that's a heart issue, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a sin issue. Yeah. And, um, and so that, that was really helpful and then he uh, then goes into um, the last the last uh, section is just everyday life implications mm -hmm. of encouragement. You know, encourage mm -hmm. encouragement in our uh, parenting, encouragement mm -hmm. in our marriages, yeah. encouraging uh, encouragement in the church, and then the expansion outward. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, very, it's, practical. It's very, very, very practical, very very practical, and just well orbed. Book. He just hits on mm -hmm. all different sections and factors mm -hmm. of your life. Um, so uh, really helpful, really, really good stuff. And so that's the basic structure of the book. And now we just talk about, uh, you know, the reason or the main focus of the book, which is the gospel is our greatest encouragement. Yeah. yeah. So obviously that's the foundation of the book. And it is one of the chapters. The gospel is our ultimate encouragement. In order for yeah. us to have motivation to go out and encourage, we have to be receiving encouragement ourselves. And, um, you know, the gospel, he talks about the gospel being like the panacea, you know, like if you know, like in mythology, the panacea is like the cure-all, you know, yeah. if you receive it, no matter what your ailment is, you're, you're cured of it. And that's, Kind of the way the gospel is for us you know in many ways it's yeah. like the it's like the the ultimate encouragement for us if we avail ourselves of it now yeah. oftentimes we can not do that and we find ourselves in a discouraging place but yeah and just a personal um side note about this um i, I can just i can remember for example I remember, i've read the book once through but i've been going back sometimes and just reading parts of it because it's just so encouraging and I, I love I love yeah. the book, um, but I remember one day in particular I was struggling um, with like mom guilt and just feeling like I just couldn't measure up and I just couldn't do what I wanted to do for my girls and I just picked up the book and I was just like I gotta you know it's time for me to do my devotions I'm just gonna you know read this part about the gospel because I feel like I need to hear about the gospel and it was it was like it was from God because the chapter and the part of the chapter I was reading he actually used an example of a mom struggling with mom guilt and how she applied mm. the gospel to that and I was just like wow yeah. like that was God you know bringing me to read that at that time yeah but he just brings in all different things we can struggle with there's just a you know a vast array of things that can just keep us down and um, you mm. know in our sin we can be discouraged because of our sin and how the gospel is that encouragement yeah yeah, so. yeah, and he ta he talks is sp uh, specifically in that chapter. He talks about the encouragement of the gospel to unbelievers and to believers. So for the unbeliever, you know, you can give somebody an encouraging word, and he he's ta um, in the beginning of the chapter he talks about how there's this superficial gospel that's kind of being passed around, where it's all about self esteem and making you making you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, and the gospel is this, the, the gospel is to uh, give you success or uh, make you feel important or um, these different things. And he says that the gospel is not about any of those things. He says the gospel is about um, reconciliation with God and being forgiven of your sins. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. And, and Christ dying for the sinner. See, for the unrighteous or the unbeliever, they're still being judged by God. So any of those things, any of those encouraging words can't be encouraging. The, the ultimate encouragement is the gospel because it's bringing people back to God through Christ. And so he talks about, uh, he gives an illustration 
of um, of this painting. It's called Checkmate, mm -hmm. and it's <laughs> it's the it, it, you know, and the painting depicts the devil on one side and this young man on the other. And the young man is fearful, and he's uh, you know um, he's sweating profusely, and and Satan's on the other side of the chessboard, and he's almost grinning with uh, delight. Uh, because the young man sees that he that the devil has him in checkmate mm. and what Chansky is saying is that for the unbeliever it seems right before the gospel before they receive the gospel they are in checkmate mm. they're in yeah. checkmate because they're they're still guilty for their sins before God mm. and Satan keeps accusing them accusing them of that guilt but he says that uh, later on, a man looked at that painting, the same painting, and he said, no, there's one move mm -hmm. that the young man can make. He's yeah. not in checkmate. And what Chancey was saying is there's one move for the unbeliever that they can make. And Christ is, uh, is that one move to mm -hmm. get them out of checkmate, mm -hmm. okay, to get them reconciled back with God. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was just a great example of how can that not be the most encouraging news in the world mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the sinner. And yeah. we all remember that if you're, uh, you know, if you're a believer today. You remember uh, he gives an example of uh, a young man that they had met uh, before he became a Christian. He was empty. He was depressed. All of these mm -hmm. things. He had a broken marriage. Um, and their heart went out for this guy. But he said that, you know, he came to Christ and everything changed. You know, mm -hmm. all of that guilt and, 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 and God started to mend his whole life together. He, he got out of that checkmate mm -hmm. situation. So. And that's not because of anything that he did. Right. It's because of what Christ did. He, you know, it's just, that's why the gospel is such an encouragement because it's not based on things that we do. It's based on just putting our trust in what Christ has done on the cross yeah. for us. He took the punishment for us. Yeah. And now God sees us as clothed in his righteousness. righteousness and perfect like his son. And so when we feel our sin, um, you know, we repent of it. We go to we go to Christ, but we also realize that he sees us in Christ and he sees us um, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And that's a big encouragement. Yeah. And then he goes on to say that for believers, and you were talking mm -hmm. about this as well, you know, mm -hmm. for mom guilt and, and mm -hmm. but whoever it is if, you, if you're a believer that the gospel is the ultimate encouragement and the gospel is uh, the ultimate motivator uh, to keep pressing on in the Christian life and you can relate to any aspect of of your life and it comes back to the gospel mm -hmm. being that you have the perfect righteousness of Christ now upon you and you live in that liberty and freedom that God sees you as perfect even though you're not even though we sin and stumble. Uh, the great encouragement is, is that now that we have faith in Christ and we're believers, uh, God delights in us, and God treats us uh, as He treats His Son, mm -hmm. and, and that that is the most encouraging uh, word that uh, that the Bible preaches about, and uh, that you can give to somebody else. Okay. Lastly, mm -hmm. some personal examples personal examples of encouragement or how you were encouraged yeah. in your life. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk you. about some examples that um, we can remember when encouragement was very impactful for us throughout our lives. And then we would love it if you would respond and comment on, um, just leave a comment about a time in your life that was very encouraging, where encouragement, you know, had a profound impact on you. Because um, it's just, it's encouraging to, to read and it's also motivating to us to continue to encourage. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. so I, I was thinking of so many different examples. It was hard for me to choose one. Um, one that's a little bit more recent um, that I can remember that had a big encouragement, you know, profound impact on me as far as mm -hmm. encouragement is um, when I was first starting to teach at Christian school. And it was my first year t uh, teaching at Christian school. And I had a teacher who was my mentor, an older teacher. Um, her name was Miss Di Stefano. And um, she was just so sweet. She was like a grandma to me. But she was also someone who, who told me how it was. She, she wouldn't just tell me I was doing amazing, you know, if, if I wasn't. Like, she would tell me things I needed to work on. And I think because of that, um, I had a lot of respect for her. 
and for her opinion. And I just remember um, she would come and she would watch me teach. So I would do these practicums. I would teach my class. I had a real class, but I would teach them and she would come in and she would observe me teaching. And then afterwards I would sit down with her and I remember she would tell me different things, you know, oh, you shouldn't, you know, don't let them talk so much. Or she would give me different pointers on what I could have done better. But then afterwards she always told me, and it was so sincere and real. She always told me, I think you're gonna be a great teacher. I think you have it in you to be a great teacher. I think that you are a natural teacher. And even after hearing all those little criticisms that I needed to hear, it was like after, once she told me that, I was like, I can do this. And um, I really think it was her that really gave me the, the confidence to be a teacher for the years that I was. And I really enjoyed it. And I always kind of, you know, went off of her confidence, I guess you could say, that she gave me yeah. as my mentor. So, Miss Di Stefano, she was very sweet. <laughs> yeah. How about you? That's a good one. Well, um, I can also talk about a lot of uh, mm -hmm. different uh, times in my life where I've been encouraged for the good. I remember I had one coach uh, when I was uh, younger, uh, probably when I was 14 or 15. Uh, he was my baseball coach. He was uh, Coach Lightman. And uh, I remember in the beginning of the season, I had one of the worst slumps um, that I'd ever had. Um, I probably got a couple of hits in about 30 or 40 at bats. And I was, uh, you know, batting close to, you know, eighth or ninth in the lineup and all my confidence was just completely shot. And I remember just sitting on the bench and he came up next to me and, and uh, sat next to me on the bench and he, uh, he put his arm around me and he just said, he said, Costanza, <laughs> he's like, you're worried too much about this. You're a great player. Just go out and play, mm. you know? And uh, he's like, I believe in you. The, 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 your team believes in you. You know, you just go out and do it, and we're, we're behind you 100%. And uh, I remember that just kind of gave me, you know, that, that boost, that epi, EpiPen shot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I had the confidence to go out there, and I knew no matter what um, that my team was behind me, and I started to play a lot better. Mm -hmm. And it actually turned out to be one of the best seasons I had ever uh, played, uh, you know, in shortstop and then um, also uh, batted you know really well that year so uh shout out to coach lightman for the uh for the <laughs> encouragement wherever you are man yeah <laughs> <laughs> um it's interesting one of the chapters in the book um it's entitled companion companion of encouragement and um it speaks about a friend or a companion um who's an encourager but it also speaks about that person also giving criticism Mm. and how that's necessary at times, um, especially if there's a glaring sin that we may have in our life. A true friend um, mm. will give us a word of um, criticism. Mm. Uh, and uh, I remember when I had first you know, started preaching um, at our church, and this has nothing to do with sin or anything like that, <laughs> but it does have to do with criticism, but loving criticism. Mm -hmm. um, I remember... Um, one of the brothers in the congregation after I had preached a sermon and message and everybody was very encouraging to me in the church like they always are and said thank you and all of that and uh, I had one brother uh, who came up to me and uh, he just gave me some uh, constructive criticism about my preaching mm -hmm. and he came up to me and he uh, told me um, here are a few things that uh, that I saw that maybe you can work on to get better and I really appreciated that mm -hmm. you know because he loved me enough to tell me hey here I, I see a, a few things that you know could be approved on uh, that maybe that you are weak in that you can uh, strengthen yourself mm -hmm. and I think that's a very important thing of encouragement you know um, you know criticism loving criticism is necessary mm -hmm. and uh, you know we should all strive uh, for excellence. Yeah, Lombardi said that perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. And I thought that, you know, mm -hmm. for Lombardi, he would give criticism, loving criticism to his players because he wanted them to be excellent. And um, that involves critique. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, that brother that came up to me after um, my message, 
uh, in love, uh, he gave me a critique that was very helpful. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think when criticism is done the right way, it can actually be a form of encouragement. Um, in the kind of way where you feel that this person is criticizing me because they see so much potential in me that they're giving me the time of day, I guess, in a yeah. way. Like, um, I remember my basketball coach, I used to feel very encouraged because he would spend a lot of time teaching me. Um, even when, you know, even when I wasn't playing, if the boys were playing their game, he would say, hey, Rachel, come sit by me. I want to talk to you about the game. And, you know, while we're watching and he would... You know, while we're watching the place happen, he would give me pointers or show me things that to do. And I just felt like he saw potential in me, so he gave me his time and he gave me his effort and he, um, you know, worked with me and taught me. And that was very encouraging to me. And so I think there yeah. there can be ways to, I guess you could say, constructive criticism that you can do it in a way that is encouraging. Yeah. But just be, you know, beware of being that just critical, sour person. Yeah. That's you know, because there's, there's a, a balance. Difference. Yeah, there's a balance to it, of course. Yeah. 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 Well, All right. Well, thank you for um, joining us in this discussion. And like we yeah. said, please leave a comment um, about um, a time when you were encouraged and um, its impact on your life. We would love to hear about that. And um, check out this book if you have not read it. We would greatly encourage you to read. This is what it looks like. Encouragement. Right here. Okay. Adrenaline for the Soul by Mark Chansky. Yeah, and one, sh uh, you know, shout out to Mark Chansky. Okay, I've, I've met him actually one time and spoken to him a few times, and uh, it's not surprising that he wrote this book, yeah. Encouragement, because he is a natural encourager. Yes. Um, so uh, thanks to Mark Chansky for writing the book. Uh, it was impactful for us, and hopefully it'll be impactful uh, for you as well. So God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.